Hi everyone, I'm going to do another Dark Table video. This time uh, I'm going to do a full uh, workflow. So um, I'm just about to sell my motorbike, so I've taken a bunch of shots of my motorbike and I'm just going to go through and edit them. So you can see I've just loaded those up into the light table. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and mouse over each image in turn. I've just zoomed in with the with the scroll wheel, control scroll wheel. I'm going to scroll down with the scroll wheel and look at each individual image and just press 2 or 1 on the keyboard to either select it because I'm selecting it by giving it two stars. You can see there that I was just comparing two images that were quite similar by scrolling up and down and up and down. So I hit 2 on there, hit 2 on there, hit 2 on that one. So you can see you can quite quickly go through a set of images and you can see how quickly it, it's you can look at these images. Now you need to remember though that when you first import the images you're actually, there's a little deer there, um, you're actually looking at the embedded JPEGs unless you've edited uh, the image or unless you go into the settings and click the box which says generate a raw file or a half size raw file from the image rather than the JPEGs. So I'm still scrolling through these images, uh, just hitting two on the keyboard um, each time. Now, the actual image, there's me lying on the couch, the actual image that you're working on is just the one that you're mousing over. It's not the one that you've clicked at all. So now I've selected two, and then I just moused over that image, and I just pressed one, and it disappeared because I've got in my view in the top left-hand corner, I've got two or more selected. So I've now got my images that I actually like the look of and I'm going through and I'm just eliminating some more because you know maybe I selected some images that looked good but they're too similar to each other. I only, I only want one of each view so you can see I've got two of the right hand side of the bike there, two of the left. So now I've double clicked the image to go in and start editing. Um, now this image is backlit, you can tell because the bright part of the sky, it's actually after sundown, but the bright part of the sky is on the other side of the motorbike from where I am. So, you know, I'm just going to straighten it up there by right clicking, so I've used the crop and rotate, right clicked, drawn a line, that straightened it up. Now I'm fixing the lens correction, and now I'm probably going to just brighten it up a little bit, but you know, looking at the shadows and highlights, I'm thinking, you know, does that make it look better, yes or no? So this is how I normally work through. As I just look at the image, I think, you know, is it improved? You know, do I want to try and make it a little bit brighter? Let's use the tone curve for that and look at the results. Now, of course, there's only so much I can do, you know, without adding more light to this image. I didn't take a flash with me when I, was, when I rode out to sort of do this. So I'm trying to do what I can with the image that I have, but it would have been better to, uh, to add flash. So, you know, I'm just fiddling with the various options here, looking at the compression to see if I can make the sky look a bit more natural. Um, you know, just trying things out. Yeah, compression, you know, it looks, I think it's starting to look pretty good. Okay, so now I'm just going to um, crop the image, get the rule of thirds right, you know, making it the sort of normal image size. These are just going to go onto eBay so they don't need to be amazing. Um, but you know, I'm just trying to make the, make the motorbike look as nice as, as possible, so I figured I'd go through. So now I'm going back to some previous images. Now you can see that the we've got a mini version of the light table down the bottom once I go into light table mode. Um, so I'm going into dark table mode here, dark room mode here. Down the bottom we've got a mini sort of light table. So I could decide that I didn't want an image uh, from there. I mean I'm switching in and out of the light table and dark room uh, at the moment. But you don't need to do that. I could just mouse over an image at the bottom and I could just hit the number one and that, then it would disappear because my selection criteria is one or more. So I'm just going through, I'm looking at the images, making sure that I like them, um, and trying to work out whether I need to do anything. I mean, these ones that have the light behind me, they look nice and poppy, so really there's not that much that I need to do um, you know, with, with fixing the exposure so much as the one that had the light behind. 
So you can see I'm just zooming in and out with the control mouse wheel and then um, flipping between the images by mouse wheeling up and mouse wheeling down to compare them. Alright, so now I'm going to edit this image. You can see, did you notice that subtle difference in the colour? That's because I just switched from the embedded JPEG preview to the RAW, and the RAW obviously has a lot more information. So straightening that up using the right click uh, technique. That's too much because too much of my image got cropped off. So I just sort of used the scroll wheel on the angle slider there. So I'm just uh, selecting the part of the image that I want and I want to get rid of a bit of the context on the left or right. So, uh, you know, I just changed the aspect. Often things like this will look better on online um, if you change the aspect to a sort of fatter or sort of less um, not as wide so that because a lot of um, websites will just scale the image based on the um, size the horizontal size of the image then sometimes just making it a little bit fatter if, if the image that you're trying to show doesn't have important stuff on the edges then it can be better at that aspect of seven to five you know you need to get away from being a little bit religious about you know the best aspect or whatever well, you know, maybe the best aspect varies depending on the situation. So my most of my dark table videos have been, you know, focusing on a single image. I just wanted to do this video to show what how I would normally work with a bunch of images that are not in any way, you know, specialty. So I'm not spending a large amount of time working on these, these images. Here you can see I've just got a shot of the speedo. You know, I just want to show this speedo. I just want it to look decent, so I'm just fixing the white balance by selecting a you know a grey area or or a white area, and I'm just doing this by eye. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect in this situation, so I'm just doing whatever I think is necessary. I mean, to be honest, this is probably way overkill for what you would put on on uh, on eBay. So I think you know that's starting to look pretty good. And I was just looking at that thumbnail and I think, oh, you know, it's not quite straight, so I'll come in here and straighten it using that right-click technique again. And really all I want to show is that the what how many miles it's done and all that kind of jazz. So people know. Okay, so you know, I've edited most of the images. I'm just gonna go in and edit this last image. Well, I'm looking at the um, by clicking on that button in the bottom right hand corner I'm looking at the overexposed areas there's no overexposed areas really so I've almost not needed to work on that so here it looks like I'm going back to the more difficult challenging image again oh, okay I'm obviously I'm recording the audio now um, ah, okay I think I'm fixing the white balance but this white balance is the default so I can't copy that because it's not in the history stack so I'm going and I'm looking at the temperature now 63.35 Kelvin and I'm gonna go put that into uh, just right click and then type that in so that'll make it a little well worse in this situation I mean the white balance between these two images is simply different um, in this image the motorbike is basically in shade whereas in the other image it was uh, it had the sun shining directly on it so now I'm just trying the spot white balance and you know I'm getting better results I want it to be sort of warm uh, rather than the cold like it is at the moment so I'm just selecting sort of a grey area or a white area to try and get the white balance to look similar So now we're talking, we're starting to get it a little bit closer to, you know, the sort of interesting sky that I just want to um, to see. I mean, essentially when you're trying to sell something like this, you're trying to um, make people be able to see themselves with that uh, motorbike as part of their own, you know, life, as part of their own fantasy about what they want to do, get away into the countryside or whatever. So... Yeah, so I'm now setting the image size, you know, I just want it to be not that big, 75 quality, because it's just going to go onto eBay. It doesn't need to be printed and put on the side of a bus. So those five images are exported now, and that's it. 
So now I'm just going to go in and to the directory and look at the output images. Um, and I normally do that using the G key program, G W E Q I E. So here we are. So I'll hit full screen now, go to the outputs, hit full screen, and just go through the images. And there we go. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed it.